Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to another episode of It's All Relative. Thank you so much for joining us and in today's episode we're going to talk about real estate. It is no secret that real estate in Canada or even in Toronto has been on the front pages of the news in the real estate world worldwide. So for those of us living here in Toronto or in Canada, we have a lot of questions. What is happening? Why is it happening? And for how long will all of this continue for? So it gives me great pleasure today to have with us two very successful real estate brokers, Mace Dirani and Sam Valimamad, who are real estate brokers with Remax Ultimate and co-owners of Maison Valley Properties. Mace, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for Sam. Having us. Okay, so let's start. First question. Um, we've heard that today most of our income is spent on our mortgages, on our property taxes, our utilities. So as a result, affording or being able to afford a home is more expensive now than it's ever been for the last, say, 20 years or so. So what advice or what suggestions would you have for somebody or people who are looking to get into the market, people who want to own their first home, given that the conditions that are prevailing right now are so adverse to that? You bring up a very valid question, a question that um, a lot of first-time buyers are sitting down right now and asking themselves. Um, they're watching what's happening in the market as it's currently changing and finding and thinking to themselves, is now the time to move? Right. Should I wait? Uh, what should I do? Um, so to, to address your question, let's talk about what has happened over the last you know, 10, 15, 20 right. years. Um, you know, Toronto, we're, we're trying to make it onto the world-class stage. Right. Uh, we're trying to be you know, considered one of those cities that uh, is a major player, internationally speaking. Um, and as a result, we are attracting a lot of immigrants uh, from all over the world. Uh, so it's a combination of things which has increased uh, you know, the sale prices considerably Correct. Year over year over year, we're talking, you know, 20, 30, 35% growth year over year. Wow. Um, which a lot of people have been concerned with it being sustainable or not. Correct. So right now, um, it, it, things aren't changing in that regard in terms of Canada, Toronto specifically, being a desirable place to live. So we don't expect, you know, immigration numbers to come down anytime soon. Okay. Interest rates are historically low, uh, yes. as you have mentioned. Absolutely. Um, so... You know, you bring up, I remember you had, you had mentioned to me one time, is this the perfect storm? Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. And to be honest with you, when it comes down to what has caused prices to increase at the rate that they have, then perhaps maybe it, it is what, you, what some people would consider to be the perfect storm. Um, so the question right now is, what do people do? Yes. And I, I, there's, there's no general answer, blanket statement, that's going to kind of solve everyone's problems. It, it really depends on everyone's situation it ultimately will come back to why is that person looking to buy. Right. Right. Your house is your biggest investment. Everybody Absolutely. knows that. Yeah. But people buy houses for different reasons than just investment purposes. Correct. Right? They buy because they want to get into a specific area. They buy because they want to develop equity. They buy because they're sick of renting. So it's a combination of things. In terms of timing, if you look at the last five years, the people yeah. that have kind of waited, right. the prices have gone up almost double. Yeah, and I think it's a big regret for a lot of people right now. Exactly. So waiting may not be the right answer for some people. For others, it might be. Generally, it, it, it depends. Every situation will be a little bit different. Right? What, about, what about the people who have this obsession with owning their own home? Because I did read something a few days ago that Toronto is being... There's this obsession of people in Toronto who want to own their own home. Do you think... I mean, it's probably not right to make such an emotional decision, right? Well, I mean, uh, home ownership, uh, the pride of home ownership is a very, very common thing amongst right. Canadians, amongst North Americans, I would guess. In fact, there's an actual, I didn't mean to cut you off, there's an actual statistic to back that up. We have a 60% home ownership rate. Okay. 60%? 60%, which is the highest, uh, in, in, internationally speaking, it's one of the highest in the world. Wow. Okay. America is at about 50, 51, 52%. So we're higher than America. So continue with you. Well, we typically tend to be conservative Canadians. That's what right. we are, right? We know that for us, it's better to build our own equity than to build somebody else's equity. Correct. And so that mentality of if I were to pay rent versus paying my own mortgage, we're Canadians, we're conservative, we're going to pay our own mortgage. Absolutely. Um, 
to address kind of some of your points here, I mean, what do people do in a, in a rising price market? Uh, many people, if they can, they'll choose to relocate and, and buy in outlying neighborhoods outside of the core. Prices are, are, are better. Correct. And as long as there's accessibility back into the city, if that's for employment, um, that's then that's what people will do. Right. Um, they're doing just that. They're, they're moving outwards. And if they can't, they're managing their expectations and they're moving upwards. So at the moment, this is the trend that you're seeing, that they're moving away from the core of, of the city, I'm guessing. If there's a need to move, if there's a need to sell and buy, then that tends to be what happens unless, you know, uh, money isn't such an issue. Right. Because it is right, more and more expensive here, right? Yeah. And people are taking equity from their past properties, putting it forward to the new one, and saying, hey, if I just increase my debt load by 20%, I'm going to have this newer, bigger house. Right. And they're bringing forward the, the equity that they've earned, that the market Correct. has given them. Correct. And from their last house, and they're pushing it forward, right? So right. they're rolling forward that, that momentum. So, I mean, obviously, along with us, I'm sure everyone, in the, uh, all the viewers, they're aware what's happening. You know, we hear it every day. Prices are going up. They're not going to go down anytime soon. So the question then, then is, what is the government doing? What have they done? I mean, surely there's, I'm sure there's an outcry at the moment. Uh, we, we see it everywhere. Has the government taken any... Any measures, any, any steps to, to sort of arrest the situation, I guess? Well, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just going to take a lead on this one. Please. The, the, um, the response from the provincial government is, you know, what you would expect from the response from the government. It's, it's too late to start applying some of the fixes. Okay. The core problem, you know, has been a supply-demand problem. And by applying fixes to foreign tax, vacant tax you know, rent control. Uh, rent control, all these things are fair, but they don't address the core problem, which was inventory. Right. Okay, and so the ability for new homes to be built, the, the pressure on builders to actually build on the lands that they already own, Correct. to actually build on them and create new supply, yeah. is what should have been done yep. years ago to right. prevent, okay. to prevent um, a surge in demand by lack of supply. So those are the kinds of things that, you know, it's easy to say in hindsight. But yeah. The supply problem is the real core of the problem. Now, some of the controls that they put in, do they have an effect? Will they have an effect? I'm going to say, sure. We've seen some of the effect in, in Vancouver. We're in the midst of some change, of some flux right now. It's right. been, what, a month since the announcement yeah, came out? Yeah, it's been just the announcement. exactly yeah. a month, actually. And so we've, you know, we've seen some change in the market. Is it directly correlated to this? We're, we're going to have to see a little bit more activity. Can you, that. can you shed a little more light on some of that change in the market? Uh, is it a slowdown? What is it? So uh, it's, it's what a, have you seen? It's a couple of things. Um, we, let's talk about what, hap what was happening before the announcement. So right. before the announcement, the first three, three months, the first quarter, was incredible for growth. Prices right. were through the roof. Sam and I can attest to the fact that we were representing multiple buyers who were putting offers on properties every single day because the inventory was so low. Right. We were competing with eight to 15 people every single Absolutely. time. So what was happening prior to the announcement was general buyer fatigue. A lot of buyers were feeling, you know what, this is too much. I can't continue to go on Correct. at this rate. I'm bidding on a property today at 700 and a week at 725 for the same property. So a right. lot of them started to mentally already kind of withdraw. withdraw right. And a lot okay. of people were actually starting to get a little bit more inactive with their searches. Right. So that was already happening. Now couple that with the fact that generally every year, April, May, we get an influx of inventory. This is what we call our spring market. Right. So people were already thinking of selling in the winter months. This led to the spring market and inventory started to come out. Now, bring up the fact that a whiff of the government changing things up Correct. started to hit potential sellers. And FOMO, fear of missing out, right. the seller's edition started right. to kick in. So you got a lot of sellers rushing, rushing to sell because they're worried. Now we've peaked. Now is the time to cash out. Correct. Then the announcement is made. So the announcement had 16 changes, which were supposed to, you know, I guess, curtail demand, uh, help be better regulate supply. Uh, but really, the impact was more perception. So the buyer's perception to what was happening, what was, happening was the right. real impact. So the natural attitude that buyers have taken and are still kind of taking right now is let's wait and see. Right. Let's wait and see. Right now, for the first time in five, ten years, buyers have options. Oh, Albeit, okay. a lot of the options can be considered overpriced when you compare it to what the market is going to bear today. Correct. 
There's options out there. So now it gives them the perception that, you know what, I got some time, I got options. It's a little bit more of a welcoming environment. Yeah. They're wondering, hmm, can it Should get I... better? Can, right. it, can it get better? Mm. Right. And that is where we start to run into the problem. Got it. Right? Now, throw in the fact that the media yeah. is only adding fuel to the flames. <laughs> and what we have now is more or less... Um, a mental recession, if you will. A lot yeah. of people are kind of mentally thinking, hmm, what's going to happen? Right. Let's prepare for that. When the truth is, if we look at a market that's already experienced the same thing, i.e. Vancouver, right. they experience four to six months of uncertainty. Right. After that, the market started to pick up again. Ah, so people will obviously assume after hearing that, that something like that will happen here as well. It's an inventory thing, right? So as right. inventory starts to get regulated, as prices start, as pro properties start to sell off, as some sellers decide, hey, you know what? I may not get my price right now. I'm mm. going to pull off. I'm going to pull it from the market because a lot of the sellers, they're not desperate. Right. A lot of sellers that are currently selling right now have already purchased. Ah, so those ones are right. desperate. Interesting. Right. Yeah. So it's it's an interesting time right now. Um, you know, we do have advice for buyers and sellers uh, in terms of you know what we think they should do, uh, but every situation is different. Uh, which is why we don't want to give a blanket statement to kind of solve all problems. Correct. The key right now is representation is more important now than it's ever been. Absolutely. You got to make sure that you're working with an experienced team uh, or someone who knows the market who has potentially dealt with a, um, a more balanced market. Correct. Because for the last five, ten years, it's only been up, 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 up. So a lot of real estate agents, that's all they know. Yeah. Right. So true. for now, now, more than ever, it's important who you are. And, and you guys have been doing this for how long? Combined 20 years experience. 20 years? Nearly, nearly, right. just about. Good, yeah. good. So then, obviously, the next question would be, there's people out there today who want to take advantage of the market. So it's been a seller's market for a long time. So that natural thought... Correction, thug, it's still a seller's market. It's still a seller's it's, market. If you look okay. at the statistics, yeah. we're looking at about one and a half months on the market right now, on average. Some homes are selling a lot quicker, of course. Right. In order for it to be a buyer's market, that number's got to go up a lot. It's got to get Fair to enough. at least two, three, four months. Right? Fair enough. And that so, number is probably not going to be, you know, um, appreciated anytime soon. Okay, understood. So, so then what about the people who want to take advantage now? They say, okay, we've, we bought our house a long time ago. We want to sell the house. Yeah. And, you know, potentially, you know, uh, make, make that profit yep. that, that they would like to. But then the, what the, the next thing is the house that they will go into yep. is probably equally, if not more expensive yep. than... So that, that conundrum, how do they, how would you deal with that? You know, there's people who want to sell their house, but then where do we go? Mm -hmm. What do we buy? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure that's something you come across all the time, every day. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, it's a bit of a risk reward scenario, right? Right. Definitely. If you're willing to take a risk um, and you feel that, you know, this new house I'm going to buy uh, has potential to grow in value. Right. And I feel that, you know, it's likely to happen, uh, and if, for example then you know that's the risk you'll take and, and proceed with it if you're buying and selling in the same relative market right. for example you're not relocating out of the neighborhood that you're in yeah then you're going to assume that unless you're downsizing you're probably going to pay the same if not more for the property you're buying okay right it's not likely that you're going to sell a house that's 2500 feet and move into another house that's 2500 feet down the Correct. down the block It'll be upgrade. you'll either be downsizing or upsizing Correct. So if you're going to be upsizing, you know you're going to be spending more, you're going to be taking on an inherent risk. Am I looking at a continued upside in this market? Um, so as with all things, there's risk reward. Yes. The other side of things is that you can, you can relocate out of the city if that's feasible and reasonable for you. Correct. Um, you can rent. You can sell your property, rent it, and invest in real estate that produces an income for you okay. to help offset the cost of renting and potentially provide you future incomes. We've helped a lot of people actually uh, explore that route whereby they sell their major asset, yeah. they decide to rent for a bit, but to hedge their risks, they kind of still keep their, their feet in the equity game right. by owning a, you know, an income property. Okay, right? so, but, but such, a, such a, a system or such a strategy would probably work best if things would slow down down the line. So, you know, depending on who we're speaking with, we don't like to convince people right. of, you know, how, you know, how to think. We can give them the information that we have and we can help guide them. Correct. It is true that at the first time in a long time, we're at um, a high level of uncertainty, right? It is becoming more of a balanced market. So if some people are concerned that, hey, we're not sure where we're going to be in a year from now, mm -hmm. we, we, we don't necessarily want to change their mind. 
Right. Right. We personally feel this market in the long run is still going to continue to be strong. We're going to see strong growths, maybe not 30%. Right. Maybe something more modest, 5 6% per year, okay. which is reasonable, which is sustainable. Which it's is, very, which very is different from what we've seen over the last it, five it years. It is, though. but I think if anyone that has you know, reasonable common sense would think, hey, it's not sustainable. You can't grow 30% every year. Correct. Right. So at some yeah. point, you know, things are going to change, whether the interest rates go up, whether government gets involved and intervenes. You know, these things are happening as we speak. Right. right? So, so at this point, what I want to do is I want to pass it on to... To our viewers, um, I'm sure a lot of you, from what you've heard over the last little bit, you, you have your questions, you know, and what I'd like you to do is, is ask your questions. Uh, Mace and Sam today, they're here. Um, I'd, like, I'd love for you to share your questions with us um, in the comment section, and please share your thoughts, your questions, any ideas you may have, anything that you're thinking about as far as real estate is concerned. Please share those thoughts with us, those questions with us in the comment section. I promise you, I can assure you that Mace and Sam will be going through each one of those and responding to you. So please uh, feel free to share your thoughts, your questions with us. And again, as you've seen in previous episodes, um, we have those really good Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge Passes to give out. So I'll continue to give out two more in today's episode. So please make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts in the comment section below. So coming back to, uh, to you both, um, uh, let's, let's personalize this a little bit. You said you've been doing this for 20 years. Combined. Combined. Yeah. So that is obviously a very long time. Um, and I'll ask this question to each one of you. What is the most fulfilling part of your, of your job? What's that one thing that you might see happen and uh, you, know, you feel that, no, this is where I belong? Well, I mean, uh, first off, I mean, because we both really love what we do, we right. have a genuine passion in, in real estate, in, in investments and in finding people their home. We've had, thankfully, we've had quite a few moments that, that make the whole thing phenomenal and worthwhile and, right. and you know, you want another one of those. Right. So f for me personally, because I've, I've, I've been looking more into the investments, income properties, right. I'm finding great satisfaction in helping alleviate people's concerns for, I'm in the market, I'm not in the market, but I want to do something. Right. And, and connecting them with the right uh, investment, income property, for example, um, provides a different satisfaction than, than the previous ones that I've experienced. Absolutely. But this is because this is helping to take care of them for the future. For the future, right. And, and this is a, a, a next level of, of satisfaction that we're, we're getting to yeah. now. Fulfillment, right. Because right. we're meeting their, not their current needs, but their future needs now. Right. By helping them find the right investment on that right? note because yeah. you bring up a really good point um and i see you're like i see what you're doing especially focusing on the investment properties more so um you're allowing people to see um you know rates of appreciation uh rates of growth uh income streams that they had no idea right. what was even um attainable because we're not taught these things in school right right there's no one that's going to say hey when you finish university Look at investment properties, right? Right. <laughs> right? There's no yeah. one except you know us who, yeah. who are really telling people there's other options and throwing it in the bank or you know or sitting on it or living in it and there's nothing right. wrong with that. Yeah, I mean this is a very rich dad poor dad mentality and and since I've read this, uh, you know I've I've really understood it better and and I'm now really trying to apply it as much as I can. Right. And the whole concept is is you have, in most cases you're sitting on and living in the greatest asset of your life. Correct. And you're earning appreciation and you only get the benefits when you sell it because it's fully tax free. It's your principal residence. Correct. That's a wonderful thing. But it's a very passive thing and it's only realized when you sell it or you take out a, a line of credit against it. Correct. Okay. The other side of things is that you're, you're able to uh, put that money to work for you. Absolutely. And actually yeah. generate an income for generate you. Generate income, yeah. And, and now you have different tax implications. It's understood. But your money is now... You're, you're not living on your greatest asset. Your greatest asset is out there working for working you. Working for exactly you. Right. And that's, that's kind of the concept that, that I'm living more so. Right. And, and, you know, trying to shine that light to as many people as I can. Correct. Right? Because so a lot of people what about, what about your side of the coin? Um, you know, there's, like Sam said, there's, there's so many aspects of, yeah. uh, of our everyday uh, dealings that bring us a lot of joy and fulfillment. Correct. Mine's a little bit more cliche. I, I like meeting someone for the first time who's never bought a property. Ah, sitting okay. with them, first time um, buyers. A first time buyers. Love first time right. buyers because um, every situation is a little bit different, right. and uh, it's it's really fun getting them to that right mental state, mm -hmm. right. so they can 
essentially pull the trigger on their own because they're so well informed. Right. Um, you know, Sam and I have a different approach to dealing with real estate. We like to give as much information as possible. Yeah. We're not pushy. Uh, we let our clients come back to us and say, this is something I'm interested in. And we give them the tools that they need to, to make it happen. Right. Uh, but when we're able to give a first time buyer their keys on closing and, you know, get them in the door and say, hey, look, this is yours. This is what we've done together. This is what you've done and we've helped you. There's nothing greater than that feeling than them smiling and saying, and them saying thank you at that point. No, that's, I can literally picture that. A, sure tear, a very, tear or two uh, has a yeah. uh, known to drop in that, that moment, I, I right? can only imagine yes. how fulfilling. It's touching. Uh, fulfilling it's very touching, is. right? Yeah. I mean, Definitely. So, so on that note, yeah. I, know, I know you have something for, for all our, our viewers today. So why don't you, uh, you know, tell, tell the viewers what you have for them? Well, it's, uh, you know, since Sam and I started working together, uh, we, dis we decided to put on an annual event. Okay. Um, which we, you know, tag as MVBBQ, which is Maison Valley Barbecue, uh, which is just an event that we have, we host every year for our, you know, friends, family, colleagues, community members, neighbors, mm -hmm. just about everyone uh, to come by, have some burgers, uh, get a lot of free giveaways, prizes. We got, um, you know, entertainment for the kids. It's a really great place to network with people. Okay. Um, it's just our way of giving back to the community and giving back to everyone that's helped support us along our, our way. This is our, our eighth, eighth annual it's event this year. Longest, yeah. um, so we're really excited. It's going to be on July 8th. Yeah. July 8th. At uh, 27 Glenarden 27 Crescent. Glenarden. Yeah, we'll have all that information on the screen. And, and uh, you and a couple of hundred friends will be there, hopefully, yeah, eating absolutely. some burgers and having well, some Well, I've cream. heard that there's some really nice give giveaways that you do. Apple watches. Yes. And, uh, Hopefully we'll see some drones this time. Ah, maybe. Uh, that's not, not a bad idea. idea. That's, that's not, not a bad idea. Right, right, right. Well, there you go. We're, we're actually contemplating what the right. big giveaway is going to be uh, this right. year. Last year, what we did is we kept it interactive. We put okay. on our social media uh, status, hey, let us know what you think the prize should be here. All right. The prize should be. Uh, and last year, what, what it was, was uh, a night in the six. So a night in Toronto right. uh, at a really swanky hotel, great restaurant. Uh, some spending money. And that was what people wanted. So we gave that away last year. The year yeah, before, it was nice. an Apple Watch. The year before that was an iPad. So we'll figure it out. Um, it's going to be something awesome, big ticket. Nice. And, you know, the greatest thing is just coming out, meeting new people, um, spreading some love, having some great burgers. And a Absolutely. chance to say thank you to all our, all our clients, all, all of clients. our people who, who right. support us and, and who stand by. Top right. referrers and our mortgage brokers that we work with right. and our lawyers right. that we work with and just overall, you know, associates. Yeah, so maybe we can have the audience tell us uh, what would you like to see <laughs> as a giveaway at their big uh, barbecue. So... Um, I hope uh, you know you've you've shared your thoughts with us. Uh, please continue to do so. Um, all the information uh, for Mace and Sam is going to be on the screen. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to them, um, we I will we will provide you with with all that information. And I hope you have enjoyed uh, today's episode. Uh, there's a lot, as you can imagine, real estate is an extensive area of discussion. So if you'd like to see more of this, uh, please let me know. Do reach out to us and let us know if you want to see more episodes like this discussing real estate any questions that that you might have uh mace sam once again thank you, thank you so much for coming on thank you. it was a Thanks pleasure having us. you guys and uh please like i said you know feel free to reach out to us and we hope that you have enjoyed today's episode and we'll see you again next week thank you bye-bye